anyways, we are back with the fifth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Um, I apologize for that little technical error right there. That's my bad. But <clears throat> in this next segment, we are going to continue with my free agency grades because there was a lot of moves that ended up happening in free agency. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about that a little bit more because, again, a lot of moves and I got a lot of opinions to share and only very little time to share them. So we talk about next we are going to talk about uh, Jason Tatum's extension with the Celtics while it is a huge amount of money that they are signing and it puts the Boston Celtics into the second apron it is well worth it because it ultimately resulted in a championship so I have to give it an A plus well not no I'm, I'm gonna give it an A I apologize but I have to give it a very high grade because how could I not? He he won the championship, and until hindsight kicks in, like, when the end of the contract is, like, uh, the five years when they finally, when the contract expires, and given the amount of time, how many championships they can end up getting after that contract expires, then our, the actual opinions are going to be a little bit more clear, but as of this rate, they're fighting to go back-to-back, and they're fighting to keep their, you know, starting lineup intact and continue to win championships. So I really don't have a problem with this huge max contract. Next, we have Tyrese Maxey getting a $204 million max deal with Philly. I talked about this a little bit, but I really skimmed over it because I wasn't entirely sure just, you know, the deal and what it entails. But definitely an A-plus move coming from the Philadelphia 76ers. He is a young player. He deserves to stay on the roster, and he deserves all the money that he gets. And the only problem, really, with this signing is the fact that this just puts the Sixers in the second apron and could potentially, I believe it puts them in the second apron, and it really could just mess up the the franchise trying to get other players as well. But they do have a solid big three, and in my opinion, you know, they could make a lot of noise. Now, Next is Clay Thompson with the Mavs in the sign and trade. Three years, fifty million dollars. Now, I again like pairing this, pairing him up with Luca and Kyrie is a very solid pickup because they do need that solid catch and shooter for the team. They can run plays off the ball, cause you know a bunch of distractions for the team that they would, des- well, not really distractions for the team, but, you know, so distractions so that way they could distract the team that they are going against. And so because of this, I have this as an A because, you know, this makes total sense in my opinion. I mean, having someone to run off the ball while Clay Thompson, well, not Clay Thompson, while Kyrie and Luka are doing something with the ball is going to be a lot better than just having those players stand still, literally just stand still, and wait for them to get the ball when Luka and Kyrie make a move to the basket, which is a big problem. So next, we have Tobias Harris joining the Detroit Pistons for $52 million. This is, it it makes total sense for the Clip, not the Clippers, the 76ers to let this man walk because of his terrible performance in the elimination game. Now, I think, you know, this is going to be the average case of a good player on a bad team. So his stats might be a little bit inflated going into this season and, you know, playing for the Pistons. I give this a B simply because, again, it could be a simple case of good player, bad team. Like how the Wizards are, and honestly, you know, I can't even say, scratch that, because I was going to compare this to, like, like how Jordan Poole is with the Wizards, but Jordan Poole is awful on the Wizards, and everybody expected Jordan Poole to average 30 points per game, but he never did. Now, next we go Isaiah Hartenstein leaving the Knicks to go to OKC. Now, this is a, I think this is an A move coming in from the, um, from the OKC, because these, while they do have a starting center with Chet, Isaiah Hartenstein is going to be a great option coming off the bench. Excuse me. And it seemed like once OG was getting all of that money, it was almost guaranteed that the 
it was almost guaranteed that the Knicks weren't going to be able to re-sign Isaiah Hartenstein. So the OKC, I give them props for being able to pick up such a good player, and I give that an A. Next, we have Kelly Oubre returning to the 76ers. Now, while Kelly Oubre, you know, isn't all that, in my opinion, as, you know, a player, he's a very solid role player for the team. And while he it does have an attitude, I remember he did flip a lot of the refs off. He did say F you to the refs. You could clearly see that in video clips when and he was he did get fined for doing that. So filling out the roster around two stars on max contracts, you know, it's going to be hard enough under the league's new CBA with Paul George now joining them on a third max deal. The Sixers were in a real danger of sacrificing their depth. But, you know, Kelly Oubre he brings tremendous value on a veteran minimum deal in Philadelphia last season, averaging 15, 5, one steal, and 1 steal per game in 68 games. And they have a real chance that there's a real chance that Oubre could have gotten more than uh, from the contender possessing the full 12.9 million non taxpayer mid level exception. By signing for this amount, Oubre's new salary could fit the Sixers million dollar room exception so this is a pretty good signing for the 76ers and i give it a b plus next we have jalen smith getting 27 million dollars coming in from the chicago bulls now i think this is a c minus because this is just ridiculous amount of money for three years from a player that isn't really all that and he's gonna and he's gonna be a backup power forward so why are you giving a backup so much money but that's just me. Now, next we have Isaiah Joe signing for $48 million for four years with the Thunder. And I give this an A, A- minus because, you know, he is a solid player. And after waving, he, like, he did get waived by the 76ers in 2022. He signed with OKC, became one of the better three-point shooters. And honestly, you know, I genuinely just think this is a great pickup. And they need... The they need the roster that they have right now to be able to develop and so that way they could end up winning a championship in the future. This is why they also signed Aaron Wiggins getting forty seven million dollars from OKC. And I take I give this an A minus. Again, these players they were incredibly valuable to OKC and their success. So really no more need to talk about that. And we are running out of time, so I am going to speed things up a little bit. Drew Eubanks signed with the Jazz. I give that a D because that is just a horrible deal for two years, $10 million. For someone that isn't really that important for the roster, while they could use most of that to renegotiate Larry Markkinen's contract and give him an extension, it was surprising to see that the Jazz's first order of business was to give Drew Eubanks a $10 million deal, which is why I give it a D. Next, we move on to Delon Wright giving the Bucks some sort of depth, a one-year $3.3 million contract. I really think this is a very solid pickup. So I'm going to give it a B plus. Like he is a he is a very solid player. Now he is 32 years old, which is really like the only downside in my opinion, but still relatively solid player for the Bucks. Nicholas Batum reunites with the Clippers on a two-year $9.6 million contract. I have to have this at an A because Batum is, you know, he was a very valuable asset for the Clippers when, you know, when he was on it. They, he's 35 years old, but he's still a really good defender and he can shoot and play whatever role they'll need him for the Clippers. So that's why I give him a solid grade. DeAnthony Melton signing to the Warriors on a one-year $12.8 million contract is, you know, I think I think that's a little bit much, but his production more than makes up for it. He averages 11 points, 3.7 rebounds, and 3 assists on 36% shooting from 3 for the Sixers last season, so I'm going to give this a B plus and or a B just around that area. Aaron Holiday gets $10 million from the Houston Rockets. Now, while I don't really think that's a lot, I don't think that's a good signing simply because his production isn't all that. He's going to be making five million a year to average six points, one assist, and in 16 minutes, just and shooting 
38% from three. Now, the three-point shooting percentage is fantastic, but again, that kind of production for $10 million for two years, I don't really think it's ideal for Houston, so I got to give it a C. I'm sorry, this is not it. Next is Goga Bidan, Bidaze re-signing with the Magic. Again, forgive me if I botched that name. It is for three years on $25 million. Now, he, he's going to turn 25 in July, so there may be a hint of development in, like, I think he might develop into being a pretty solid player. So he did average 5 points, 4 rebounds, 1.3 assists, but he did also average 1.2 blocks in just 15 minutes. Now, per 75 possessions, he averages 12 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2.8 blocks. So his production could be phenomenal in the future if he does get more minutes. So I give that an A. Next, we have Gary Harris re-signing with the Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic. Oh, but aside from that, you know, two years, $14 million. Now, they did get KCP, and Gary Harris, you know, he's probably not going to be the starting lineup if, if they do get KCP, but he is a very solid player coming off of the bench, and he does average a considerable, you know, a consistent nine points and 1.43s while shooting 39% from the three-point line. So he's also a very solid defender, so he could be a very, very good, you know, substitution coming in from the bench. So that's why I give it a B plus. Then um, we have Chris Dunn returning to the Clippers. I also give that a B plus because he is one of the best defenders in his draft class. Or No, not in his draft class. I apologize for that. In his free agent class, I meant to say. And... In just 20 minutes, he averaged 7 points, 4 assists, and was shooting 39% from 3 on Utah. So, definitely a good pairing with Kawhi Leonard and James Harden, in my opinion. Then, finally, we have Mo Bamba joining the Clippers, and I give that a B just because, you know, I'm not a really big fan of Mo Bamba. We, I also don't know how much the contract is going to be worth. It's still to be denounced according to Woj it's on a it's a one-year contract so again I have no idea how much money he's going to be making on that contract but he only averaged seven points five rebounds 1.2 blocks and only one three-pointer and quite honestly the only real thing that he's really acknowledged for is the fact that he is on the song like his name is a song Mo Bamba I'm sure you guys know exactly what that song is and how popular it was but aside from that that is all I have for you guys in this final segment. So thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Also, I should mention that that was my own list and my own opinions. However, I did get a lot of the notes from Bleacher Report. I just wanted to point that out so that way you guys would know. And yes, that is still all that I have for this final segment. And as usual, please remember to use the link in the description to get your comments recognized or the link displayed below the ticker on every show segment. That is gsmcpodcast.net. It really helps the show, makes it much more interactive between myself and you guys. But that is, again, that's all I have for you guys in this segment. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson, and as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna.